So in this example, we're going to look at the following electric circuit that has a capacitor and a resistor placed in, in series to one another, so adjacent to one another. So let's look at our electric circuit. In this electric circuit, we have one battery with a voltage of 10 volts, and we have one resistor with a resistance of 2 ohms, and we have one capacitor with a capacitance of 1 microfarad. Now, let's look at the two questions that we want to answer. First, we want to find the current across our resistor at time equals zero. And then we want to find our current across our resistor and the charge on our capacitor when our capacitor is fully charged. So at some unknown time, some time greater than zero. So let's look at the first question. Well, at time equals zero, we just put our battery into our circuit. We just flip the switch. And at this point, our electrons just begin moving from our anode to our cathode. So at <coughs> time equals zero, our electrons have not yet reached our plate. And that means if electrons haven't reached our plate, no electrons have yet accumulated on our parallel plate capacitor. So our charge on our plate at time equals zero is zero. Our plate is uncharged. So that means because our electrons move this way, our current must be moving in the opposite direction by convention. So our current through our resistor just begins, begins to move. And that means we can simply apply Ohm's law, V equals IR, to find our current. So we know our voltage across our resistor, which is 10 volts, and we know our resistance. So we simply plug in our values, and we find that 10 volts is equal to 2 ohms times our unknown current. We bring over the 2 ohms, and we get 10 volts divided by 2 ohms gives us 5 amperes. So at time equals zero, when our capacitor is fully uncharged, that means that our current through our resistor is 5 amperes. So what happens as our, as our electrons reach our plate, as our electrons begin to accumulate on our plate? Well, as electrons begin to accumulate on this side, electrons are leaving this side. So electrons begin moving to our cathode. And that means that as electrons begin accumulating, less and less electrons begin moving from this place to our cathode. So less and less electrons are moving through our resistor. And that means our current progressively becomes smaller and smaller. So once again, as our capacitor begins to accumulate charge, our current begins to decrease. Now what happens when our capacitor is fully charged? Well, when our capacitor is fully charged, the amount of voltage on this capacitor is the same as the amount of voltage in our battery. And now we see that there is no difference in electric potential. There is no difference in voltage between this point and this point. It's exactly the same. And that means there is no electromotive force to push our electrons, to move our electrons. And so electrons stop moving when our capacitor is fully charged. And that means if no electrons are moving, no electrons are moving through our resistor. And so our current at some unknown time when our capacitor is fully charged must be zero. So our current is zero amps. Now, we want to find the charge on our capacitor. So we just said that when this guy is fully charged, our voltage is the same as the voltage of the battery. So if, you, if we use the formula Q equals CV, we know what our capacitance is and we know what our voltage is. So we simply plug the values into our formula and we get one microfarad times 10 volts gives us 10 microcoulombs. So when our capacitor is fully charged, our charge in our capacitor is 10 microcoulombs or 1 times 10 to the negative 5 coulombs. And our current, our electrons, because our electrons aren't moving through our resistor, that means our current through our resistor must be zero.